something very exciting has just been delivered in the form of all these boxes. Sorry, I'm actually out of breath because I just had to drag these from the front room into the kitchen. I don't think I will be attempting to build what is inside these boxes today simply because it's too hot and I actually need to clear some space in my office. But basically what is inside here is a lovely kind of side board with drawers for me to put in the office. And then also inside here is a, like a shoe storage, <clears throat> excuse me, a shoe storage uh, thing, like unit, to put in our little porch area as well. Um, but yeah, I need to clear some space in my office first before I even think about taking any of this upstairs. Um, I think building this might be a job to do tomorrow once it cools down a little bit. Okay, I've cleared some space within the office slash Monica room. I'll just show you the wall that I've cleared. So this is where the new sideboard is going to sit up against this wall. Originally, I had this rail of coats up against it. So I now need to find an, a home for all of these coats. I just think it's going to open up this space a lot more because having that tall rail here was just, it looked really cumbersome. The wall looks absolutely filthy on the viewfinder. Uh, I can't tell if that is a shadow or whether that is just dirt. I hope that is a shadow. Otherwise, I think I might have to repaint this wall. half as complicated as I thought it was going to be. I thought that was going to take us most of the afternoon but I think it took maybe about an hour. Um, we made a few errors along the way but it is assembled and it's all in good working order. Um, I'm really pleased with the size of it actually. I was a bit worried it's going to be too long. I thought I'd maybe measured it slightly too long but actually it's perfect. Um, I've got ample storage made sure I ordered lots of drawers because basically you customise it to how you want it. Um, I'll talk a bit more about the customisation once it's all properly styled but yeah I gave myself like lots of storage because storage is what I'm severely lacking in this room so I will be filling those drawers with all the bits that I've kind of got hidden away in bags and shoved in my wardrobe and things like that so Yes, and then I think on the top, I'll just style it quite nicely and simple. I actually would quite like a lamp, I think, on the top here, because at the moment I've only got a big light. I don't actually have a nice ambient lamp. So maybe a lamp, you know, a nice picture leaned up against the wall, some candles, some books, you know, all the usual. Um, it's quite slimline as well, so it's not too big and bulky. Like, it's slimline, but there's ample room to get books and things on there so it's I need to give it a good um good wipe because it's covered in our fingerprints after putting it together very pleased with that
Good morning to you all. Coming to you from the hallway today because I've had to move the mirror from my room into the hallway just while I sort everything out with the um, sideboard and everything. I'm just about to head out to just do some really boring jobs basically. Woke up this morning to a thunderstorm and thought great that's going to like completely clear the air but the humidity is still at about 80% so I've put on this jeans and vest combo. These are the weekday voyage jeans. I feel like I need to do a bit of a rant about uh, weekday sizing. It is so like here, there and everywhere. There is absolutely no consistency with that brand's denim across all the ranges. I can be a leg 26 in some styles, I can be a leg 30 in some styles, I can be a waist 24 in some styles, a waist 26 in others. I just don't understand <laughs> who's doing the measuring because they're certainly not doing a very good job of it. These are a leg 28 but I could probably do with a leg 26 but these are meant to be a cropped style of I don't know but they're they are they're a good straight leg jean I do like them a lot I just think you, it takes a bit of trying on different sizes to figure out which um size works for you then I'm wearing the MHL belt that I tend to wear a lot and then I'm wearing this cami from it's a silk cami from Arquette and I bought this do you know what, I think I bought this about two, maybe three years ago. It was on a bit of a whim, I just remember I needed a cami. Or I really wanted a cami for like a night out or something. I was, go I was going out and I was like, I panic bought this basically. And actually, this has been such a good buy. It was one of those things that I was a bit like, oh god, I've just panic bought a cami top for a night out. A bit like, what am I doing? Um... But actually this has proven to be a very, very good purchase and it comes out time and time again when it's very hot and sweaty. It's a really um, just good basic cami. I don't know if they do this cami or any camis anymore. I'll have a look. Um, and then I've got on some new trainers. These are new from Superga. They sent them to me yesterday. I'll talk about these a bit more when I get back because I need to get back for a zoom call I don't have very long so I need to um get all my jobs done come back do the zoom call and then I can chat to you all a bit more just had to um power walk all the way home because I forgot my mask okay I'm going to talk Superga with you now the Supergas that I have on my feet right now are part of their new organic cotton collection they've released three styles in this new all beige colorway using the new organic cotton and I'm very very happy about this because they are extremely similar to this very battered pair that I no longer well I do wear these actually I wear them for gardening and I wear them for painting but as you can see they are extremely beaten up I think I've had these for I think I've had them for about seven or eight years. I'm pretty, I remember I had them back in 2013 when we first went to Australia. So that was seven years ago. So yeah, they're at least seven years old. So they've held up pretty well, but I've wanted a replacement ever since. And in 2018, Superga did a collaboration with Alexa Chung in which she released a colorway that was, well, she basically released a, a shoe very, very similar to this. It was all beige, but it sold out really quickly and um, never seem to restock so I've kind of been pining for a new version of this ever since because these got discontinued years back years I mean I'm talking way before I was even looking to replace them so when Superga got in touch to share this new collection I was very pleased because these are pretty much identical to these I mean the beige is obviously slightly it's, it's slightly different this is actually a kind of like a cotton linen blend and it's a little bit darker but the kind of same premise really aren't they beige I mean this has got an off-white sole whereas this was all white but it's it's a beige trainer and it's it's what I've been wanting for a very very long time as a replacement for these so yeah I've worn these all day today relatively comfortable I do find Supergas are a little bit stiff on the back here as you can see, I do have a plaster on just to protect my ankle from the this kind of edge here. 
I have got some little like trainer socks on that you can't see. Yeah, I just thought I'd share those with you because I think they're a good alternative to like white trainers. I know I wear those white moody ones quite a lot, which I do love. But sometimes, well, most of the time, I think I prefer a an off-white trainer as opposed to a completely bright white trainer. We had a lot of rain this morning, so I just come outside to check up on the flowers and just see how everything's doing. And look, my scabiosa is flowering. This is a big deal, I feel, because scabiosas are quite, they're very special flowers if you've, ever seen them when they're fully flowered they're absolutely beautiful and any time i've had them in a, in a bouquet of flowers i've always thought that they're far too fancy to actually have growing in your garden but i've successfully managed to grow these two this one's not really grown that tall i mean we've got a few there's one two three more coming through i think it might be because this grass is kind of overshadowing it but this one check the height on that one and we've got a few more that are about to start coming through but once this is fully flowered the petals are really like big and fluffy they're huge i'll insert a photo now of what a full scabiosa should look like but they're just so so pretty but everything's doing quite well this needs some serious deadheading over here and then on this side this one has gone wild. Honestly, I cannot believe how big this has grown in such a small space of time. I ordered this through Sarah Raven online. And when I first ordered it, when I first received it, no word of a lie, it was a tiny little shoot. It was minuscule. Now look at it, incredible. Um, what else can I show you? Not much else really, everything else is quite, it's just doing well. The garden is really coming into its own now. Pens, glorious, glorious pens. Quite the haul from that little shopping trip. If you are a fellow bullet journaler, or you know, just a lover of stationery and writing in general, I hope that you will share this elation, this absolute excitement that I have here. I'm, ex I'm exceedingly excited about this kind of like rusty um, orange one we have here, and this kind of like royal blue one and also what color was this one like a sort of brown very excited because my current pen pot I mean seriously this is riveting content isn't it my current pen pot has a makeup brush in um has quite a lot of pastel colors I've got like a peachy color and I've got what's the other one that I use there's like a Oh yeah, they, these two, they're quite sort of pastely, so I was kind of looking for some more earth tones, because basically through, like my bullet journal when I first started it, there was lots of um, uh, 
lots of just like pastel colours basically, uh, light blues, light purples. And then recently I've been using a lot more green and a lot more blue, so I wanted to get some different shades of blue and green. I cannot believe I've just spoken about pens for 1 minute and 30 seconds. Oh, and just to continue the really, really riveting pen chat, to keep tabs of which pens I like, I write them here on the pen log. <laughs> so I just basically write the actual pen's name and style and the kind of like number or whatever it is, so I can keep tabs of which ones I liked and which ones I didn't like. Oh, my hair looks, considering I got rained on yesterday, looks quite good today. We are going to Scotland a week today, aren't we? Yeah. And we have a few bits that we need to get, including some walking boots. And I think I need a waterproof jacket. And trousers. I'm going to um, get everything. Okay, well we're going to go to Go Outdoors. And I thought I'd do a, an introduction now, because we'll have masks on, so I probably won't be able to talk much in the shop, but I will vlog our little shopping trip. <laughs> while we try on boots and things. They look good. <laughs> yeah, they look good. Uh, that one, are yeah. More I feel more I'm just going through my Strava and Nike Run Club history to looking back on the runs that I've done so far this year because I think I just completed my best 10k of the year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the best. Yeah, the best I've done this year. Uh, which is funny because I updated my running playlist yesterday and basically just added loads of kind of 2007, 2008 pop punk kind of emo music, uh, lots of Paramore, lots of uh, Panic at the Disco, lots of Jimmy Eat World, that kind of thing, because I really wanted to change up my playlist and felt like that was a complete kind of opposite to what I've been running to recently. And it's just given me so much energy. Yesterday I was on fire and I ran my first sub 50 10k in a, in a long time. I don't think I've managed to do that. Sorry, if you don't run, this is really, really boring. But to run 10 kilometers in under 50 minutes with some someone of my height or lack thereof is quite a big thing, especially, I, th I think I spoke about this in previous vlogs, as I haven't been able to do much strength training throughout uh, lockdown. And that does affect my running quite a bit. So to be able to run 10 kilometres in under 50 minutes with quite weak little legs, I feel very pleased with myself. And then today, so yesterday I was like on fire, couldn't believe I'd managed to do it. And then today I did it again, but I did it even faster. And I actually think I've managed to do my second fastest 10k that I've maybe ever done in my lifetime. I'm not sure. Like... I haven't been able to run a sort of solid sub 50 10k since I was maybe like 
like in my prime of running when I was like 25 maybe. I don't know. I don't know where this energy came from. I don't know if it's the playlist, the weather, the fact that I've been so consistent with my running, but I am here for it. It's good, isn't it? I feel like you're really going to town with the shopping for this trip. Do you wish that you got one? Um, I'll get one. I just need to get one that's like correct length for me because they're always so like if I wore that, it would touch the floor. Yeah, but we could. We could probably camp under this. <laughs> it looks like a kind of it looks like a dress I'd wear. It does. Over the bag. Might be on the bed and wet. Apologies for the extreme close up of my face post shower, but I was just putting on the Rapid Brow serum that I've been using for about three weeks now, I think. I thought I'd just do a little update because I do think I'm seeing a few hairs in areas that I have not seen hairs in for a very long time. So I will get up nice and close. The main problem areas with my brows where I had overplucked quite a lot were the front and this brow in particular was very, well still is very sparse along the bottom here, just like the tail end, there just virtually is no brow there in comparison to this one. I do think I'm seeing a few hairs come through the front here. I'm definitely seeing some hairs growing through like along my brow bone, the brow bone on both sides. Rapid Brow claims to see results around sort of like eight weeks. I've only been using it for three. So I don't feel like I've seen the serum's full potential just yet. But I like I was a bit like is this just a placebo effect Are the, were these hairs there the whole time and I'm just like overthinking things and imagining them now but I do genuinely think there is some regrowth in places that I have not seen regrowth in a very long time so I'll keep you updated as and when I see like more results. Vlogging has taken a bit of a back seat this week and I'm very conscious of it and I'm sorry um, but I know you will all be very understanding it's just being, um, it's just life gets in the way sometimes and it's life that you don't want to vlog. Anyway, I am going to merge, what you'll be watching now is like a merge of two weeks into one because there's just not enough footage from last week to justify a singular vlog for that week. Anyway, I, I ran out of my Glossier mascara and I've just been testing out a new one from Hourglass which is called Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. As soon as I put it on, my lashes all clumped together and then the curl just instantly just dropped. So that was great. I'm just trying to recurl them so that they stay curled. But on Friday, I'm going, I've booked myself in for a lash lift, which I cannot wait for because I hate mascara, <laughs> I'll be honest. I really do not enjoy it. And I don't think my lashes like it either. They just, I, I can't get on with mascara at all. Right, that, I think that'll do. That's fine. Um, I'm in a bit of a rush this morning because I've got some things to do before I head off to London to get my second uh, tattoo removal session.
getting to that point where there's not much food in the house, but there's not really any point in buying food because we go away today Thursday on Sunday. So I'm just trying to use up the leftovers. So I'm making myself a Friday on crumpet, which surprisingly is really good. I've never done it before. Well, I did it the other day and I was like, okay, this is a combo that I can definitely get behind. Because normally I just have a fried egg on toast. There we go, lovely. I'm just on my way home. I've just been to the post office and did a rather large depop dump thought while I'm walking home I'll talk a little bit more about my day in London yesterday. Didn't vlog much of it um, but did manage to video the actual laser removal which was great. The studio gave me an iPod that they had and were like here use this rather than potentially damaging your own camera and phone. So that was really helpful so you could see a little bit of what the actual removal looks like. Oh I've gone very dark. Um, Oh, it was just such a miserable day yesterday in terms of like weather. Oh, I nearly tripped up. It just torrential rain all day and I don't really enjoy London at the best of times. So when it's torrential rain all day, I just really was not enjoying it. Um, and it's such a funny time to be going into London at the moment because previously when I would go to London, if I had like an hour or two spare in between uh, meetings or thing, you know, things, whatever I'm down there for, I would go sit in a cafe and do some work and, you know, I'd go sit somewhere on my own and like be productive, answer some emails or whatnot. And I had like this window of like three hours free yesterday and I was like, what can I do? I, and I had some, I had some urgent emails I needed to get back to and some messages that I really needed to reply to. So I was like, right, I need to look for a cafe to sit in. Could not, for the life of me in Central, find somewhere to sit because all cafes at the moment are just doing takeaway. You can't really sit in them. And then I thought, right, I'm going to go to Thomas's, which is the cafe, well, it's not a cafe, it's a restaurant attached to the Burberry store on Regent Street, but it's a really quiet restaurant. And it's the kind of restaurant that I don't feel a bit, I don't feel conscious about sitting in on my own. It's very peaceful. You can sit there with a cup of tea, a piece of cake on your own. So it's quite good in that sense. So I walked there to find that it was shut, but not shut in the sense that like, oh, it was just not open that day. It was completely boarded up. I was absolutely gutted because their food is great and it's just such a nice atmosphere. And I hope that it was just boarded up because they're not open at the moment. I hope it's not because they haven't, like they've closed permanently. So at that point I was like, right, I really, really don't know what to do. I had, I was meeting a friend at about five-ish for dinner. I was like, I don't know what to do for like the next two hours. Um, I just need to sit down and answer these emails and these urgent messages. So I was like, right, what, where can I, I can't stand under an umbrella and do this. So I was like, right, I wonder how long the bus journey from central to east would be. So I had a look on City Mapper and it was predicted an hour. So I thought, right, that's it, I'm gonna sit on the bus for an hour. Like, I can't, I'll be dry, because that's all I wanted. I just wanted to be dry. I was just hot and sweaty, because it was humid, it was raining. Like, I just wanna be dry. So I sat on the bus for an hour. There was literally no one on the bus and just plowed through all of the things I needed to do on my phone. It was great. Um, so yeah, that was my day in London yesterday and then had a very nice dinner in the evening got back from having my lashes done they always look really clumpy when you first get them done but over the next 48 hours they'll um separate and then they'll be lovely fluffy lifted lashes why is it always in the week leading up to when you're going away it feels like you have a million and one things you need to get done all of a sudden it's like last week didn't really have anything to do and this week all of a sudden it's like every job under the sun needs doing i'm actually going to show you my outfit because um i really i really like it um, one of those kind of outfits that I just threw on quickly in a mad rush to leave the house and actually really like it, so I've got a sweaty top lip. I can only apologise for the mess that surrounds me. I'm getting a kind of Annie Hall vibe from this outfit. 
This navy knitted vest is from Margaret Howell. I bought it yesterday when I went into Liberty. It was on sale and it was the last one just there hanging on its own and it was in my size. And we all know that I like a vest. I like a knitted vest, especially when it's kind of like 22 to 25 degrees, um, maybe a bit overcast. Don't wanna wear a t-shirt, but don't wanna wear a full jumper. The knitted vest is a very, very good solution for that kind of in-between weather. Um, it's got some very nice brown buttons. It's like ribbed, it has got pockets as well. I've just tucked it in to these Sandro trousers, which you will have seen before. I wear these quite a lot. And then the new Superga trainers that I spoke about a couple of days ago. And then just my Ray-Ban sunglasses. I like this a lot. It's, um, it's, it's very me. It's, you know, tailored trousers and a nice knit. Oh, the sun's doing a thing. I can't believe it's Saturday already. I have been putting the vlog together this morning and it's not a good one, is it, guys? It's been such a bitty one. I'm really not pleased with it. But um, to be honest, it was refl it's a reflection of how the past two weeks have been, just me picking up the camera at really random points and not really documenting things that well. So today is Saturday. We fly tomorrow morning to uh, Scotland. Ugh, my head is just full of, like, things that need to be done, but it's fine totally doable and um i've got a nice long list to work through and yeah it, it's all fine i just i think i'm just over over exaggerating anyway yeah i um yeah i'm just sorry that this has been a bit of a weird vlog it's just not been consistent it's just been here there and everywhere today um we so basically we're, we're going on a camper van like road trip and the camper van is very small it well it's not for me it's not but for Dean who is um obviously a lot taller than me has longer legs than me I think it will be a little bit cramped so to kind of give us some additional space we have bought this kind of like it's called a camper van awning but it's more than an awning it's like a tent that you add onto the side of your camper van and it essentially gives you an outside private space because a lot of when you're like when we go on road trips and that a lot of our time is just spent sort of like sat outside the camper van reading having dinner and that and because the weather forecast for next week in Isle of Skye is not great we thought that this kind of awning attachment would be really good because it gives us a space where we can sit outside in the evenings or you know any time of day but we'll have a cover over us because the camper van doesn't come with an awning, which is um, just the only downside of how, this, how small this camper is, is they didn't, they haven't modified it with an awning, which is a bit frustrating because most camper vans do have an awning. Anyway, it's um, it's fine because we've bought this like this camper van uh, tent attachment thing, which we're going to try and test out in the garden. We're going to do like a test run to see how easy it is to assemble and then pack it away again because we don't want to get in the camper van in the first night have this disastrous experience trying to set up this awning thing um so yes and at first i was a bit like oh is this going to be a really stupid purchase that we won't ever use again but we've got some friends who have a van that they're kind of like trying to turn into a camper van so that they can go on road trips more regularly and they were like we'll use we'll borrow it we'll take it off your hands if you don't use it so um, I don't feel like it's a complete waste of a purchase. So yeah, we're gonna just go and try and do that now in the garden. <laughs> um, fingers crossed this is like a really easy thing to do. So this is what it's supposed to look like. See what I mean? It's pretty much a tent that goes on the side of your camper van, essentially giving you this whole outside space to then use. And the it doesn't require any poles i think the whole thing is just inflatable is that right yeah so you just like pump it full of air and it just like 
inflates. So we thought that that would be easier. Yeah, Hopefully you easier. It sound like a bouncy castle. Yeah, well, I realise how mad it sounds. I'm saying it out loud. But with I, the, the logic is is that this sounds easier than fiddling around with something that's got loads of tent poles. Like if you can just literally inflate something, and then it's done. Okay, well let, let's just see how this goes. It, I mean, it could be a disaster. It could be the best thing that we've ever bought. So we obviously don't have a camper van to attach it to, so we kind of attach it to our fence. And this thing is huge. Dean, are you inside? Oh no. no. Look how big this is. Like, can you stand up? No. Just. I'm, what, six foot? This is going to be great. And then that zips, you unzip that and... So that could then be like, this would be like a porch bit. Right. I guess with the doors open. Oh, can you? Oh, I see. You can untoggle these and then you've got your windows. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm guessing they'll sort of pin back like a little. Like a curtain. Oh, yeah, yeah. maybe you. Because you've got windows on the side here. Windows there. And then it obviously comes with a big ground sheet. Yeah. Because we're meant to get a lot of rain. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad we got this actually. I was thinking this was a bit of a silly idea. Especially because it's, we don't go on camper van trips very often and it's just so big and heavy, but... Yeah, camper vans are small, aren't they? Yeah. If you have to stay in them for... Well, the one we've got is small. Okay, so it seems like it's quite a fairly straightforward setup. Clip just on. Clip pump. on, pump it up and then peg just it. peg it down. Oh, I can't wait for this. It's good, isn't it? This is really good. I think this is going to be a game changer. Yes. Yeah. It's going to change our camper van experience. Yeah. It's time for the pre-holiday fashion show. You know what I'm talking about. I bet there's loads of you that do this before you go on a trip away. You've just got to go through the key outfits that you've got on your head to double check that they look right. Um, no matter what calibre of trip I go on, I always do this. Um, I'm trying to keep this the packing as simple as possible. I'm talking like, I mean, I probably won't even take all of this, but I'm talking literally like jumper shorts. I've got some cycling shorts. Um, I have got some leggings here somewhere. I've got my running shorts. And then for tops, it's like half zips. I've got like a long sleeve Carhartt one. I've got this uh, Uniqlo one. I'm keeping it really, really simple. And as you can see, I'm being ever so adventurous with my color palette and everything is gray, white, and black. I feel like I need to throw a bit of colour in here actually. That is quite <laughs> uh, quite lacklustre, isn't it? I've got my barber though, that's kind of like a greeny, browny colour. Right, I'm gonna try some stuff on. So weird to see myself in such a such a combo. Um, I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything. Although to be honest, there's not a lot, so I could do. Um, it's pretty much a variation of jumper and shorts, and if it's not shorts, it's leggings or waterproof trousers. This uh, fleece, this lovely half zip, is from Patagonia. It's actually a men's one, um, with this very handy, huge pocket on the front here. 
Uh, sorry, I've got, I don't actually have anything on underneath there. I picked a half zip over a full zip because I actually find full zip things quite annoying. I like with a half zip that you have the freedom to kind of like um, tuck in, bunch up, you know, I just feel like they're more comfortable than a full zip. Although I know a full zip might be slightly more practical because you can obviously use it open. But um, yeah, I just prefer to have the freedom to kind of like tuck this bit in if I wish to do so. Um, these shorts are those white cos ones that pretty much everyone's got. Uh, boots are from Go Outdoors. And my hat is a Norse Projects one that I've had for ages and just haven't worn. I think I've always just been... Hats are a funny one. I get really particular about hats and a bit self-conscious. And I've always liked... Sorry, there's... Um, some dirt there. I've always liked how a bucket hat looks but I've always kind of been a bit funny about how a bucket hat looks on me but this one's very practical. It's waterproof and it's very lightweight, very easy to pack. So yeah, I'm digging this look. If it's say, you know, maybe like 17 degrees, not raining, this is like the ideal for me. But I've got a funny feeling it's going to be rain all day, every day. Sorry, I'm starting to lose the light a little bit now, so things might look dark. Um, bought this birdhouse jacket on eBay this week. Every outdoor and camping shop that we went into, obviously they had awesome jackets, but they were very, very expensive. And I get it, like, they're obviously very practical, but I just couldn't justify spending over £100 on a jacket that I wasn't necessarily going to wear again or I couldn't see myself wearing it again like this year so I thought why not try eBay and found this Berghaus one uh, it's waterproof, it's Gore-Tex, it fits like a dream and it was £25 so can't complain it is, I mean they said it's used but I can't see like there's no stains on it or anything I can't tell it's been used underneath I've got this half zip from Margaret Howe then cream denim shorts from Marquette I'm not quite sure if I'm going to take these I don't know if denim shorts is a good idea will I be really uncomfortable in them should I just switch these to some cotton shorts or some jersey shorts hmm and then New Balance 990s I think I'm just going to travel with these and the walking boots I don't feel the need to pack any more shoes. I think just those two are fine. I was thinking, oh, should I take a fancier, like fancier pair of shoes if we go to a pub or something? But like, am I overthinking it? A pub wouldn't mind if I just turned up like this. finish this vlog literally I'll just add this section in and then um upload start to upload it and then I'm going to go for a run do some last minute packing have some breakfast and then we're off I don't know why I'm whispering I mean Dean is still in bed and these are the first words I'm speaking this morning so um <clears throat> so yeah this is me signing off the vlog um, obviously I am vlogging next week, but I have no idea the length and the depth of vlogging. Um, so I don't know if it'll be in two parts, I'm, I'm not really sure, but um, it will be vlogged. Uh, we're in Scotland for eight days, yeah. So, it's, so we go Sunday to Monday. So it could potentially be a two-parter vlog, or it could be a very long... Oh, excuse me! could be one very long vlog who knows but it won't be up next week obviously because we'll still be in Scotland like at the uh, next week so um yeah there won't be a video for at least um at least sort of like 10 days I'd say um but I have faith that there, there will be a Scotland vlog Thank you so much for watching this vlog. Um, the 
uh, however bitty and weird this vlog was but um yeah i'll see you all in scotland